The age-old debate of playing tall or playing wide is gonna be settled right now as me and Dave are gonna be testing out in a multiplayer game which playstyle is best. I want to thank Paradox for sponsoring this video and I want you guys to know that E4 is free until the 13th of December. So now is the time to try the game out if you haven't already or maybe get some of your friends to try it out and if they enjoy it, the base game is 75% on discount and most of the DLCs are 50% off as well. I'm gonna link all of this in the description below so do make sure to check it out. I also recommend that you check out Paradox's Twitch channel where you can find the grandest virtual party, the greatest E4 event of the year that will feature some kick-ass multiplayer. If your friends also decide to get the game then you should know that if the host has all the DLCs like I have over here then the people joining into that host's game also can enjoy the DLCs without owning them themselves. I am feedback feedback here and I will be ruling the great wide orange boy of Europe. Gives me Napoleonic vibes. It, it, it looks like Napoleon's France to be fair <laughs> in 1444. I've spent my points simply to make my borders as girthy as possible. Uh, when you get into game you'll see why I'm so wide because the big part of me is this. Everything else is downhill from here or oh, you'll see. So guys in contrast to Dave's country our country has only one province, but despite having one province, we used the same amount of points to build this country. So why is that? Well, take a look at this. We start with development reduction minus 20% and the ability to raid every single coastline, no matter what religion. Admin efficiency plus 10, goods produced, all power cost minus 10%. That means that every single interaction that requires mana points is 10% cheaper. Movement speed for our armies, morale of armies, infantry combat ability, and discipline plus 10. But the ideas are not the only thing here, guys. Look at this. We're actually a Solomonic Empire, which means that we can also recruit the Kawa units, unique Ethiopian Chad Lords, as well as the Banner Infantry and Cavalry, because we are a Manchu nation, which has the unique banners. And to top it off, we're also Totemist, so that means we have the amazingly overpowered totemistic religion with the 10 aspect and our starting leader heir and consort are all three 666 leaders meanwhile mr feed back here over here has a massive amount of land but doesn't have the same amazing ideas and rulers as we have he is Sadly, a zero zero zero, <laughs> and his heir. Oh, come on, really, really? I need to know how how many troops do you have? Um, uh, twenty six thousand. Twenty seventy six thousand. Twenty six. Twenty six. I thought seventy six thousand. I was like, what? Quite up. I'm big, but not that big. All right. Well, did you sell your crownland, sir? Did you sell your crownlands? That's the big question here. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm at the moment, I'm currently deleting forts. Wait, why are you deleting forts? Oh yeah, because you have a lot of force don't you oh dude i thought like 50 <laughs> well i like the fact that you win zoroastrian so it's not just me that has a unique cool religion i see um i wanted to be as goofy as possible and i succeeded fair enough fair enough uh, i'm impressed by the color of this religion oh my god you're bigger than ming you have a thousand two you're the first great power in 1444 call me daddy and i have 22 development points <laughs> Bro. But hey, at least I have Kawa units, okay? Come at me, bro. You've, uh, you've gone as humanly possible, as OP as possible. True. I do indeed. Why is the dev time ever? You change the dev. No, dev's not the same everywhere. Barely. It's because you're playing in France. All of France has very high dev, so. I'm trying to dev up somewhere, but I can't find somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Try the province of uh, Chartres or the province of uh, saint -Ange. Whoa, we're getting a royal marriage now? Are we Are we exchanging relatives? <laughs> what relative are you sending me? Send you my seventh kid lubius the smelliest this nation is so overpowered even the first general i got has four fire two shock two maneuver <laughs> He's qualified as a two-shock general, as a two-star general. Damn, damn. Rejecting the military alliance, are we? Oh my god, I got spammed by so many. I don't know which ones were relevant or not. <laughs> the one with the green Mongolian-looking flag is mine. What? Why are your units... You... What? What is this? What unit sprite is this? Uh, it's Indian of some kind. So I got elephant. Right. Oh, that's cool. I got the Romans. You're Athenian? <laughs> 
I just oh noticed. What? You're a lost I'm culture a... Athenian, sir? Get this right. I'm Athenian uh, with a Zoroastrian uh, with Indian Sprite. So essentially... I'm the first multicultural nation ever. Basically, you're from an alternative timeline where the Athenians lost against the Persians back when they were still Zoroastrian, migrated to India, then somehow ended up in France. What? I'm not lie to you. That was a great RP. I, I eat that book when it comes out. Interesting. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you quickly not read and press that button over there on top. So let me read this. Ludiland would like to transfer 50% of its trade power in all our shared... Think about this one. It's a one-time offer, okay? I'm not sending it a second time. Make up your mind. Oh boy, what? I kid you not. That is a very venture <laughs> AI. I will give him that. No, that's okay. Keep going. <clears throat> you ready for this? <laughs> With the 16k? Well, looks like Aragon's back on the menu, boys. Cannot believe they actually attacked you, man. That's crazy. Isn't it? The Aragonese conquest of Carcassonne. Fifty-eight k. Holy mother of God! You got a lot of troops you can have. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Whoa! The Rohirrim are here, and they're Indians. They're Indian Rohirrims, everybody. I'll admit these oh, are boy. incredibly aggressive Aragonese. Yeah, the AI is a lot more aggressive now than it was in previous patches, isn't it? What the actual hell is happening there, man? So I guess what we're learning from this is that it's not the size of the country that matters, guys. It's the the ideas that you use as that country. One massive advantage that uh, Dave over here has is the fact that his country is so big, it doesn't matter if he loses a couple of battles here and there, because the Aragonese are literally going to struggle to actually siege down this monstrosity of a nation. Okay. Whoa, what happened there? Aragon's such an aggressive nation. They're trying to restore the Roman Empire in a multiplayer as AI. I like how half of uh, Dave's country here is a part of the Holy Roman Empire. This is basically completely screwing over the Austrians because they're getting almost no imperial authority. Guess what, everybody? We just got military tech five, and that means we have the Azab infantry because we are actually Anatolian technology. That is correct. We got the best technology in the early game as our own. Can this nation be more overpowered? We also have level two advisor and level one advisors whilst on a positive income. Oh, that's actually quite lucky. Okay, I got one stability from an event and I'm close to getting admin tech 5. That means we can get our first idea set unlocked. I'm trying to improve relations with the English right now because I need to get military access through. I will attack the Scots and vassalize the Scots, but in order to reach those lands, I actually need the military access and the English right now are not very cooperative, sadly. Hey, would you look at that? We got our first idea set unlocked and of course, we're going to be going for quantity ideas. Always go quantity, lads. Let's see how how is your technology, Mr. Dave, sir? We're at level four right now, so uh, Miltech is looking a lot, a lot, a lot better, and I will not be moving away from Mil4 or any kind of prioritization of Mil. Oh man, I'm not having that happen again. Aragon, uh, now, not only have they taken some of my land, but they're going down for the rest of the So we're going for a revenge play here. We're gonna annex all of Aragon to show them who's the real boss, right? Nice. I like that. I like that. The Empire Strikes Back. You know, you're lucky that you're my ally, because if you were not my ally, I could raid your coastlines. That would cause a lot of damage to Trust me. I'm basically raiding the entirety of the English coastline right now. I like the way that your troops are drilling. It looks like the immortals from the 300. <laughs> it is uh, preparation for the invasion of Aragon. The city of London officially has 30 development, sir. I've deved it up 10 times. Still has a problem with knife crime. Damn! Come back to me when you're at 50, Ludi. Huh? Whoa, whoa. Is this a challenge to bring England, I mean London, to 50? I'll take it. Hey, how's your manpower situation looking like? You got a lot of manpower? I'm gonna pull a sneaky and I'm gonna ask for some soldiers from uh, feedback yeah over here. You get a manpower. You get a manpower. Ludi, you get a man. Enjoy your manpower. Yay. <laughs> Very kind of you, sir. Only cost me 10 favors. What? I owe you a hundred favors? What? It says I owe you a hundred favors. <laughs> Bruh. It's not fair, is it? They changed the way it works. Yeah. Guess what, guys? I'm gonna be no being the nation of Ulster. The Battle of Ulster. 1461. Historical game. And you did. And Ulster's out. Out, that means we can fully annex them. I could vassalize for the extra land force limit, but right now I actually need the direct land control so I can start expanding a little bit myself. No, God, my leader just died. And I got a 032. Wow. <laughs> oh, no.
I mean, I still have the 666 origin uh, air, but like my next air is trash. Probably just gonna so disappear. So what was your uh, what yeah. was your uh, originally? Uh, 666. Oh, uh, no. I just took one Irish province, and I already got the decision to convert to Christianity. What? One is all you need. Yeah, all right. Off we go. Whoa! I got a 555 air. Holy mother of God! I'm gonna name him C H A D Chad. So we are at war with the English once more. It's actually the Aragonese war that. Fibakia has, but I'm helping him out, and in return, I'm gonna take some land in these areas, and you'll see shortly why. We were basically lucky because a couple of their forts were not maintained, so they did not expect us to attack them, and the extra 20,000 troops that help us out from Fibakia did help quite a little bit. Remember to keep on carpet sieging in these situations, have your main army chase down the enemy's army, whilst a few regular 1,000 units siege down the rest of the land so they cannot recruit any more troops in the meanwhile, and so you can actually loot their lands and by looting this land, you're actually holding your economy up and you're not losing that many extra troops whilst over the force limit. I'm also glad to see that Fidbakia is definitely taking their lands back and crushing the Aragonese at the same time. I'm curious, Dave, what exactly do you want to take from the uh, nation of Aragon in this war? Boom. All right, so Conquest. we pieced out the English so that I can, um... Wait... Well, this changes things. <laughs> How do I give it you? Uh, you, you can sell it to me after the war, it's fine. I'll just come in, I'll help you out in the war in the mainland. Well, to be honest, it's, it's actually already over. The brave Ludian troops have landed on the mainland of Europe, and Florence should be able to peace out now, because we only need to take their capital. We got all the land the back mob. and some! Congrats, man! And some. Oh, and also I got a bit of this land in Scotland, Ireland. How did that happen? Oh, shit! Ludi, Ludi, let's stop for a second. I want to know what, what's your mentality here. What, what, why this land? Why this land? Well, obviously it's a good land for expansion this means i have access to all of the irish lands and all the scottish lands whilst i'm waiting for my troops to finish with the english so by the time that i have the next war with the english i should have all of ireland and all the north part of scotland hey look at that purple boy in, in ireland it's just asking like oh can i please Ludi, please it's what i'm hearing as well yeah my personal favorite part about playing toll is the fact that because we have so many mana points per month we're actually 12 years ahead of tech and we almost finished filling up the quantity ideas which means we're getting insanely high amounts of manpower and our armies are ridiculously strong and not only that but i can also cheese out the estates whenever i need a little bit of extra cash so i can get a good 200 ducats during the war if things go badly and still manage to be above 20 percent crownlands time for another war everybody this time against the scots together with all of their allies here the isles kildare monster everybody in Ireland essentially. Booyah shaka, your boys are dead. We're basically just carpet sieging all of Ireland at this point. The only problem I can see right now is the fact that I don't actually have a proper fleet. All right, we siege down pretty much everything now. Let's start with uh, piecing out the nation of Schligo. They definitely agree to our demands. We do have a small coalition of basically just Irish nations, so clearly nothing important. Your boys are dead as well. And last but not least, the nation of Kildare, the famous Irish nation that invented potatoes. Everybody knows this is true. And now our fleet's actually bigger than their fleet because we wiped out the other nations so their fleets just disappeared. The really interesting part is that because my culture is Manchu but I am totemist and my tech group is Anatolian, I'm getting so many random events like I'm getting a Tatar events and like uh, East Asian events. I'm getting New World events. Truce with England is over so that means we can go to war again and this time we're going to be taking a lot of land. Let's go ahead and kill off the Irish before they actually manage to unify against me. And we also need to do this before the Portuguese arrive and help out their English allies. We don't even need to finish sieging these down. Apparently they agreed to our terms and we're going to go ahead and we're going to take pretty much all of the Scottish parts and all of Ireland together with parts of England. We went for this because it's less aggressive expansion and because it's easier to bring the Scottish lands into the fold before we do so with the English one. But I couldn't have done it without my good friend here, Feedbackia, helping out against the Portuguese and sieging them down. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing with that statement. Is it just me that finds it weird that uh, Zoroastrian, Persian, Immortal, Indian Chad Lords are stationed in Kent and Sussex? This is the most oracle timeline. Yes. This is the real timeline, right? We just diverged along the way somehow. Some Scottish boyos got high on 
on Haggis apparently and are trying to rebel, but we can't let that happen. Can no, 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 l l please, Haggis Lord, I beg, no. Boy, that was a close one, wasn't it? Thank God we got rid of these rebels in time. And of course, my general had to die during that battle because why not, right? I mean, RNGs doesn't like me clearly. Speaking of rebellions, I'm also going to be lowering the autonomy in the Irish loans, which is guaranteed to get these rebels out of the closet. Okay, I just got the merchant navy, so let's see how much of a difference this is going to make in the uh, English channel node. We're going up to 42%. That is massive, actually. And that means we already have 12 ducats on the plus. And now it's time that we start snowballing, everybody. We just unlocked a bonus both of our playing toll ideas that means we got both quantity and economic fully unlocked and as such it's going to be ridiculously cheap developing look at this 11 mana points to develop without the encouraged development edict now it's six mana points to develop so let's go ahead and push as much of this cloth up as we can 20 development in kent let's make it 20 development in uh, sussex as well and let's make it 20 development in oxford and the great totemist area of ireland also is fairly cheap to develop not as cheap as the other parts as the trade goods here are not amazing but 16 to develop not bad so let's take it at least to 10 development in each of these provinces also look at how beautiful we look right now guys all this sweet sweet green of course we also have to bring these areas up to green as well don't we make them at least 10 dev much better isn't it guys and we got 20 ducats on the plus all of it profit looks like we have a naval battle and we won it actually northumberland has fallen the gateways have opened for the rest of england damn feedback here just got land in portugal is this future expansion another big chunk out of england makes uh Ludi a very happy boyo and obviously guys we're gonna be truce breaking over here because i don't want to wait for another 15 freaking years to finish off the english isles yanissary infantry in the british isles 1503 colorized guys <laughs> the yanissaries came to play okay hey dave can you can you tell me where england is can you can you pinpoint on the map where the english nation exists well i did for a brief second there and then it magically disappeared oh oh dear uh, meanwhile have you looked in scandinavia whoa what's happening there yeah it's like denmark it's like, like their arm around sweden like just put my arm around you bro you're safe you're safe with me for now so i heard that sweden and denmark have a very good historical relationship never had any wars i like how when you scroll down you can see magister building cores on the entirety of the English and uh, Welsh region. Oh my god. <laughs> tall game, guys. This is a very tall game. Yeah, coring is a tall is a tall <laughs> mechanic. Tall feature. Now that all of England is within our firm grasp, let's go ahead and do a final push for devving up. Five mana points to dev everything in this area here. Let's go crazy. Let's use all of our mana points and let's see how much money and manpower we have right afterwards. I would be yeah, second after right. you if I did embrace colonialism. The deal is, though, in a hundred years, it's been less than a hundred years, um, 70 years, um, you've managed to take it from an OPM to fourth, fifth in the world. It does look like being tall is the way forward, having kick-ass ideas. I agree, I agree. Playing tall has always been the best way to approach a country in EO4. But the thing is, we should not diss on uh, playing wide as well. What I'm trying to say here is that despite all of this, it's not about EO4, it's about the friends we made along the way. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 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 oh god <laughs> kill me i'm just kidding guys we know nobody has friends so for the past 20 years we did not expand a single bit outside of the british isles and the final result is basically this beautiful highly developed nation of ludi land with an income of 188 total and 99 profit per month as well as 254 max manpower we went for trade ideas as our third idea idea set which gave us the amazing policies that together helped us boost this economy massively and because we're a pagan nation we also could build up the stonehenge monument you can check david's perspective on this multiplayer game in the description below and don't forget that you can play eu4 for free until the 13th so don't miss out on this opportunity and also check out the greatest virtual party all the links you need are going to be in the description below and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of video maybe i'll do another one similar to this in the future.